Okay, everybody, so we're going to do the food um, unit. So I'm going to talk about making food out of clay. So those of you at home have the choice of bringing in your pieces to get fired and glazed if you want. Otherwise, you can just make them out of clay. So this is one example of something you can make. So it's breakfast. Um, so this one obviously is pancake, bacon, and sausage. The Sausage and bacon is done with underglaze, whereas the pancakes and the plate are made with glaze. Um, and so they look really real here, but we um, can make them look even a little bit more realistic because if you look at the side of this one, they just rolled out slabs and cut out shapes, but the edges don't look like real pancakes. The next um, pancake that I'm going to show you looks a little bit more realistic. So it's only bisque fired, so it's fired once, right? But the edges are flattened a little. Okay, the butter pat looks pretty good. So this one is a lot more realistic looking. So it's very important that you go for trompe l'oeil or trick of the eye, where you're trying to go for realism. So the pancakes and the plate were done with slab. So I'm going to talk about soft slab and hard slab first. So slab is where you roll out your clay. So you would cut off some clay and roll it out. For soft slab, remember that soft slab clay is very flexible or plastic. Okay, so if you're using the soft slab clay, that would be really good for you to start off with for things like the pancakes. Okay, this is a little bit thick though. So you should use your slab mat and after you cut out your shape, um, I mean, after you have rolled out the slab, you might decide to roll it even a little bit thinner. If you don't have a rolling pin at home, you can put paper towel over a can. Because when you really look at food, I recommend that you guys look at pictures of food on your phone or computer to help you make it look super real. It's going to look a lot more realistic if you look at it and see that things might be thinner or thicker in areas when you're working with the clay. Also, you want to try to go for realism. So, for example, this graham cracker that's used for s'mores here, it has texture on it and the little graham cracker dots. So, at school, we have like fire brick and tools like that that are really good for texture. At home, you might need to look around and find something that would work really well to create texture. So this would be really good for like a cracker or graham cracker or toast. You should have got at least one stick in your um, things of supplies. So if you were going to make a graham cracker or something, that stick works really well or some kind of a ruler. And then it also is very important, especially if you're going to bring it in to fire it, that you would smooth the edges a little bit because they would become very sharp. So you would smooth the top and the bottom edges. And then if you look at a real cracker or something, a lot of times the actual edges of that food is a little bit rounded or flatter. So this isn't something you just do and finish like Play-Doh when you were a kid, although that was fun. You really want to put some time and effort into it. Your scraps can be used to make, like let's say I was making the s'mores. Here are the marshmallows and the chocolate and the graham cracker. I could use this to make the chocolate. I could make this into the marshmallows. And then you can decide if you want to keep the parts separate like this student did. Or if you would want to slip and score it together like it's all a melty s'more. So um, that is what you can start with a little bit with soft slab. Another thing might be a burger. So this burger does not look like a real hamburger. So it needs texture, maybe grill lines. Maybe you add in some tomatoes, lettuce, cheese. If the bun isn't very thick, you don't necessarily need an air hole. This one was a little bit thicker than my thumb. So basically this is a pinch pot with a flat bottom and an air hole. So. Again, you can decide if you want to slip and score it together or if you want to leave those parts separate. You might also make some fries or something for that. If you're going to make something like pizza, 
it's okay to cut a triangle out, but really look at the texture and the details and the toppings and the edges. So it's not just a triangle shape. You're really thinking about it. Same with the Pop-Tart. Really thinking about those edges of your piece. Okay, hard slab. Let's say you wanted to make a slice of cake. I have a video for one too. So I made some simple templates and I will put a picture of this in Schoology. You can also make these easily on your own. We made some for the slab house. So this is the top and bottom of the cake. This is the side, both sides, and this is the back of the cake slice. So this one, you would not use the plastic clay. You would let the clay get to leather hard and then cut out your shapes for that. So for this, you could bend the slab. See, leather hard is still flexible. Okay, and so this would be the cake slice. Now you can decide if you want a top and a bottom. If you do a top and a bottom, you would need an air hole. Now that doesn't exactly look like cake. So what you can do is you can let your drain off the extra water of your slip and use the really th thick part of your slip. Fill a Ziploc, cut the corner off. After you slip and score it together, you can actually pipe icing on it like real frosting, which is kind of fun. That's also how I made the cupcake frosting, which I'll show you in a minute. So that's slab, hard slab and soft slab. For the cupcake, you could use a real cupcake liner, that works pretty well, or a pinch pot for the base. And then the frosting was the slip in the Ziploc cut in the corner. So to make a pinch pot, you would just take a ball of your clay, put a hole in it, hold it in your hands because you don't want the base to get flat till you're ready, like we did our tea bowls. Don't add water, just smooth your edges. Then the easiest way is to kind of pat or roll to smooth it. This would work for like a blueberry muffin too. So I'd spend more time in that, but you get the idea here. Then you can take your stick and kind of roll it. It looks better than drawing the lines in. If you roll it, it looks more real. And then for the frosting, this one was swirled on top, but you could also do another pinch pot. This would also work upside down if you were going to do an ice cream cone or something like that. So that's how you can use like a hollow form. You could also put two pinch pots together to make an apple or something like that as well. To make the donut, this isn't much thicker than my thumb, so a bagel or donut or something. I would just take and roll out a fat coil. So we move from pinch pot to coil. So a nice fat coil. It's not much thicker than my thumb, so I don't have to worry about hollowing it out. And then it's okay if you work quickly and it's soft that you just smear it together. Inside too, this is like the Korean artist we saw that did the donuts. Jay Young Kim. Um, but then you would have to go in and add some detail and texture. Maybe add sprinkles or decorations. If you're going to do something really small like the donut or the macaroon cookies or Cheetos, you would want to make more than one because you usually don't just see one Cheeto or one cookie or one donut and also because it won't take you very long to make those basic things. So. Those are the three hand building techniques, slab, hard and soft, pinch pot, and coil for making your food.